Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I always wonder why they call it Little Rock. <laughs> it's based on the on that Arkansas. The story is it's based on that Arkansas River, and there was a, a something about the rocks along that river. But you, who knows if that's the truth or not? Never know, never know. But brothers, we are live, and it is uh, we have um, uh, oh, we have um. Uh, Anthony right. coming in from, from the great city of uh, Memphis, Tennessee. All right. Yeah. All right, Reggie. Good morning. You're on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, men of God. Welcome to the National Men's Prayer Call. Men of God, we get so excited every Tuesday and Thursday morning because we get this opportunity to go before God in prayer. Not only yes. just prayer, but we also have a word that God always send. <laughs> Oh my God, we're just so grateful this morning. Amen. Uh, God has uh, chosen a man here to speak with us here on the National Men's Prayer Call for the first time. And I know he's well equipped it because he's already motivated. And I just thank God uh, for this outstanding man of God that's taking time out of his busy schedule uh, to pour into the lives of the men that's listening all around the world. Uh, we have a group of gentlemen that joins us from Nigeria on a regular basis. Also, a gentleman joins us from Vietnam. And we're just thankful for all the gentlemen who joins us from all the chapters that we have here in place right now. Uh, men of God, maybe this is your first time. We just ask that you just share uh, this here uh, video, however you want to do it with your social media. We are Facebook Live. A lot of you like to jump on Facebook to join us and however it is, we welcome you. We're so excited because this day, April the 9th, 2020, this day was not promised, but God made it possible. So we're going to take time out this morning to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord. We don't take anything for granted, Lord, because there's no days that's promised. Oh, God, we just thank you. We just put our trust and faith in you because that's what the word of God says. God said in his own word that when he left us, he left us a comforter. That's the Holy Spirit. So we just abide in the Holy Spirit. And we walk by faith and not by sight. So we just thank God for this opportunity. I mean, if God, we're just so excited. Once again, like I say, we, we have a, actually a gentleman that's going to be pouring into us here this morning. Uh, we're going to continue on with uh, 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 the, the, what we have that's taking place here for the entire month of, uh, of uh, April. So we just ask that you would just you kind of just know that we're going to have people who are going to be pouring into us here the entire month uh, of April here. Gentlemen is going to be joining us from all around the world, and we're excited to have them here with us here. Uh, first of all here, uh, I would just like to ask you just to just to bear with us here, because I know we're just running into some little things here with the Facebook Live, but just go ahead and link on here. We're going to get it jumped up here in a second here. Uh, but meanwhile, let's go before God here in prayer so I can get this gentleman out of the bullpen because I know he's ready to go. And we're going to continue on series with Money Matters here and Faith and Financing and Stewardship. So that's going to be out the entire month of April. Uh, so right now, we're going to go before God here in prayer. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Oh, my God. Uh, we thank you this morning, Lord. Once again, the day wasn't promised, but you made it possible. So, Lord, we're just going to just reflect and meditate on your word. <laughs> the Bible says that in the beginning was the word and the word was God. So, Lord, we thank you because we know that you were in the beginning. And, Lord, we know that you created all things. <laughs> oh, God, we're just so grateful this morning for that. And, Father, I thank you right now for each and every man that's represented on the call this morning. Lord, they're on this call for one purpose, Lord. And Father, that's just to hear a word from you, Lord, to help build their spirit, man, to help build them up with confidence, to help build them up with knowledge. Father, we thank you. We thank you for preparing a gentleman that's going to be sharing with us, Lord, about finances, Lord. We thank you in advance for him. Lord, I just ask right now, you would just hide him behind the cross. We ask that he speak not of himself nor the flesh. But Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that he would just pour from his heart what you have instilled in him. Oh, God, thank you for that. Oh, God, we just honor you. We adore you. We worship you. We magnify your holy name because you're king of kings and you're Lord of lords. Oh, God, we thank you for being Alpha and Omega as you said you were, Lord. 
The Bible says that you are the morning star. The Bible speaks of you as being the root of David. The Bible says that you are a shepherd. <laughs> Thank you for that. The Bible says you are the living one. The Bible also speaks of you as being the line of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> Thank you for that, Lord. All these affirmations can't even do any justice to who you are, Lord. Thank you for being the comforter of us during this time, Lord. The Bible says, fear not. I am the shield in that great exceeding reward. So we thank you. We trust you enough, Lord, that the Bible says no weapon formed against us will prosper. So we stand on your word because it says your word will never return void. Ah, thank you for that, Lord. Oh, God, we just thank you this morning. Oh, Bible, we, we just thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you, Father, for that hedge of protection around each and every household. Come on, says, put the blood, the blood of Jesus is on every doorpost. You put the, the blood, you put your address on there. And you just know that it's solid in the word of God. Thank you for that, Lord. Oh, God, we just thank you, Father. We're not going to have any fear. We know who you are, Lord. You said it for us to seek you first. The kingdom. That's what you said. We just have to be obedient to your word. We only just need to use your word and apply it daily. Thank you for that this morning, Thank Lord. You, oh, God, we just love you this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for meeting every need in every man's household here this morning. I speak. There's no lack. There's no want. Father, we walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you for that. And Father, we thank you for complete healing right now. Someone may be having some pain right now as I'm speaking. The devil is a lie and Jesus is the Messiah. Thank you for healing right now. Thank you for complete healing in, in our leader, Dr. Kenneth Green's body right now as I'm speaking right now. Oh God, thank you for giving him the strength that he needs daily. Oh God, thank you for him. And Father, I just thank you right now, Lord, that every need is met. Thank you for our helpmate, Lord. <laughs> you set us up that way, Lord. We thank you for our spouse. We thank you that we walk by together on one accord. The word said the house can't stand if it's divided. Two cannot be together except the grill on the word. It's the word of God. Thank you for that. Thank you for our offspring, Lord. We just pray that continue to lift them up. Pray for them. Father, we know that there's so many things that's taking place in their mind, Lord, but we ask that you would just gather their thoughts and allow them to trust in you, Lord. Oh, God, thank you for them. And Father, I just give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord. And Father, we thank you right now. We lift up the president of the United States. Lord, we just pray, Lord, the decisions that need to be made, that he seek your counsel and not man. Oh, God, lift him up. Lift those up in other cabinet positions, Lord. That's what the word of God says for us to do is pray. <laughs> pray without ceasing. And Father, we thank you for that. And Father, we just give you all the praise and all the glory this morning. And Father, I just ask right now, Lord, I just pray for my wife, Lord. She's having some pain in her tooth, Lord. I just bind that in the name of Jesus. I pray that she is completely healed uh, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. I bind this attack that they may try to come against her. Oh, no. Oh, no. Devil, you're off limits. Because as Joshua said in his word, for me in my house, uh, we're going to serve the Lord. And we thank you right now that we can serve you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for each and every man that's on this line here this morning. We give you all the praise and all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, Brother Johnny Mac. Well, <clears throat> good morning, brothers. It's, um, it's an honor again to, to be before you and to just to um, to present today's speaker. Had a, the opportunity to visit with him um, on last night, and my, I promise you, he's a wealth of knowledge. You know, we, we're, we endeavor to bring quality, qualified speakers to, uh, to bring personal development as, as well as prayer into the lives of men. And this morning, uh, we have a jewel. This young man is on. Uh, he's the uh, a partner in the CPA firm of Denham and Hamilton. He's Hamilton of Denham and Hamilton. Um, he's married. His wife uh, loves the Lord. Two kids. He said, "That's all you need to you need to say about me." He said, "I want the Lord 
to get the glory. So with that being said, it is our honor to present to the team uh, Deron Hamilton. Darren, how you doing, sir? Doing excellent, brother. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you well. Yes. All right, good deal. Pastor Reggie, thank you, brother. It's something about getting in the presence of God, getting in that presence. There's deliverance, there's freedom. And so I've got a few things to share with you guys today that hopefully will be beneficial. Hopefully it will be, what we want is three things to occur. One, we want to educate with good, sound knowledge. Two, we want to inspire, inspire you to see and do your best life. And three, I want you to be motivated to help the next man up. Because at the end of the day, God has called us to love one another. So a little bit about me. I'm a partner here at Denman Hamilton and Associates and we're a C full service CPA firm. We've been in existence since 2013 and I've been a CPA since 2003. Now this is the, one of the few times that I actually get the opportunity to talk about two of my favorite things. One, as Pastor Reggie said, I love God and I'm seeking to be that God man every day. And two, I love empowering people to be financially sound. So today is a great day for me and my family. Came from the University of Memphis. I heard there was a brother from Memphis on the call. I came up during the days of Elliot Perry, Tony Matlock. A lot of you guys probably know Penny Hardaway. Don't yes. understand it. Penny looks about 20. I saw him on an interview the other day. He still looks 20. And you can see by this, I'm definitely don't look 20. I'm 50. <laughs> but I'm from the University of Memphis and we have, uh, we're glad to be here. Lastly, I wanna thank Brother Reginald Wright who invited us to the call. There are three things that I can say that identify as a man for me. And Reginald demonstrates these characteristics daily. One, integrity. Two, commitment to excellence. And three, an unquenched work ethic. All three of those identify Reginald. So Reginald, thank you, brother. I love you. And I'm thankful for what you're doing and I appreciate your friendship. So I've got a lot of things to share with you guys today. Sometimes I'll go at the 30,000 foot altitude, which is good, but then sometimes I have, I'm gonna have to come down lower like an old C-130 and bring it down just a little bit so you can understand exactly what's going on. So let's get started. So first and foremost, as Pastor Reggie said, and as Johnny said, these economic times are very, very different. Right now we're going through something that I haven't seen in my lifetime. I would say 2008, 2009 would probably be close to that. But right now, the economic impact combined with the health crisis that's going on, and it is putting extreme pressure, not only on our economy, but our families as a whole. So today, what we'd like to do is to talk about, well, what can we do, one, as individuals, as business owners, that will allow us, one, to help others, two, to allow our light to shine at a time when people Have we frozen? Looks like we have. Uh, 
He seems to be frozen. Uh, is that on his end, Johnny? Yeah, that's on his end. That's on his end, okay. Because the entire um, uh, program is st still going forth. He's uh, currently mm -hmm. having a bandwidth issue. Yeah. There he goes. Yeah. Oh, we lost him totally. I guess he's gonna he's gonna uh, call back in. Okay. You know, being a, a CPA, as I was talking with him last night, he was sharing just some of the um, important aspects of um, of what's going on in terms of the loans uh, that are going to be available to small businesses, uh, the uh, funds that are going to be available for um, medium-sized businesses, the forgiveness aspect, and how to uh, to effectively come on and uh, be able to um, take advantage of some of the uh, the, the, the deals that, that, that are being made available. Because as he just mentioned, we are living in very troubled and, and, uh, and difficult times, something that none of us have ever seen in our lifetime and probably never has been seen before, but we shut the whole world down. But in the process of that, um, he was sharing with me that um, the, the principles of the loan, uh, loans that are available and then what's gonna be required to take advantage of them and for the reporting so that at the end of, um, of the loan period or, or the end of the 90 day cycle that's being put into effect, that we'll be able to um, have most of, if not all of the loan amount forgiven. And then uh, he, um, I, I really, really like this brother because he was talking about the stewardship that's uh, necessary for finances in these difficult times because um, oftentimes once the, the monies that are going to be made available, the billions of dollars that this CARES Act has uh, made available, as we look at it uh, being spread across the nation, and uh, it's being made available so that the that the financial health of the of the country stays in effect. His main concern was that the the mental health and the mental uh, wealth of the of, of America is, uh, is 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 looked at as well. That we look at. But you know, the, if you don't mind me jumping in, J. Mac, even before we get that, that real, uh, we got to look at what's systemic to what's going on as well. Okay. I think everybody on the line has been, uh, could have a, a bit of clarity in knowing now that we probably weren't as financially sound as we should have been from the beginning. Exactly. And so with this thing happening, it makes us reevaluate the processes of which we have, we've managed money, how we looked at it, how our preparedness has been. And so for me in particular, well, what it does is kind of recalibrate in my thinking about it. What happens when we're at a standstill from a financial standpoint where we've become accustomed to have that flow of money come in? And it's um, it's changed me, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do what Reggie was saying, Pastor Reggie, um, yeah. is that, okay, is that yeah. here's a part of repentance that we were talking about to turn, do that 180 in the spaces that we have operated in and ask God for forgiveness and then put these tools that the brother was gonna uh, share with us in well, he's play. Back, he's back now, so. Okay, yeah. good, we can pick it up. Hey, there, brother but... Cedric, Brother Raphael? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Thank you, thank you. I'm like I'm like Brother Reggie, the devil is a lie. Okay, there you go. <laughs> My right. internet went down and I just like, what is going on? Right. But I appreciate you guys holding me down. You, you know how the adversary works. When this information we got to have, he'll throw every roadblock in the in the in, on the street on us. But we're gonna yes, get, sir. get back to it, brother. We got our notes from ready. All right. Well, hey, thank you, brother, so much, and my sincere apologies. All right. So let's get into this thing. As you know, the CARES Act just came out, and there are some really, really good things that I want to share with you guys that I think will kind of help you. Now you. Everybody's heard about these stimulus checks that are coming out. So we have stimulus checks that are gonna be issued out to everybody based on if you filed a 2018 or a 2019 tax return. So here's how it's gonna work. It's gonna work based on what your adjusted gross income is as of your 2018 or 2019 tax return. So I'll give you a couple of examples of how this will work. And the checks will come in the form of, one, you'll get, if you're single, the maximum you'll get is $1,200. If you're married, the maximum you'll get is 
$400. And then in addition to that, there's also for every child that you have under the age of 17, you'll get $500 in addition to that. So everybody's entitled to get that if you meet the following criteria. Earlier, I mentioned sometimes I'll have to go a little bit higher. Well, now I'm getting ready to get a little bit lower in the weeds just to make sure everybody understands conceptually what how this can impact them. So for people that make 75,000, if you're single, you're entitled to the full $1,200. And then if you have children under the age of 17, you'll get that additional $500. If you are married and your adjusted gross income on your 18 or 19 tax return is under 150000 then you'll get that full $2,400. Now, there's also a phase out. And basically what the phase out says is if your adjusted gross income is over a certain level, then you will be phased out from receiving the full amount, whether it be 1,200 or 2,400. So the phase out numbers for singles is 99,000. If you filed head of household, which means basically you have a dependent, but you aren't married, that phase out is 112,005. If you are married, the complete phase out is at 198,000. So look at your tax return and you can kind of make a determination of, okay, do I qualify for the economic stimulus check? You can also go on the internet. They have multiple, multiple economic stimulus check calculators out there. So I would encourage you. So the next question we hear at the office is, what are some of the requirements? Is it taxable? Will I get it? Do I have to file for it? So let me give you a little bit more as far as how this will work and some of the things you can expect to see in the next few weeks. First, you have to be a United States resident citizen. That's the first thing. If not, you will not qualify. Next, we heard a lot of times people saying, well, how Will they get the check to me? Well, if you filed your tax return in 2018 or 2019 and you use direct deposit, they will take that direct deposit information and automatically credit that to your account. If you didn't use direct deposit, they will take your last known mailing address on your current tax return and they'll forward you the check that way. So the last question that we get, it, a lot of times people just, some of our clients are like, well, my only income is social security. I really don't file tax returns. And so will I get that stimulus check? And the answer to that question is, Congress went back and forth on this and they determined that you did not have to have a filed tax return if you were low income and your primary source of income was social security and you will still get those, that, that stimulus check. So that's the first one. The second one, there has been a lot of traction about this. I am very passionate about small business. Matter of fact, I am a small business owner and I'm going through some of the same things that other people are going through. This program right here, primarily administered by the SBA, but is being conducted through local banks, provides the following information. We have an opportunity as business owners to tap in because we're hurting. Revenues are down and it's very difficult during this time because there's limitations on the amount of work and production that can be done. So what has come out is there's this payback, or I'm sorry, paycheck protection program. I think it's a great program. I think every 
business owner needs to evaluate if they qualify for this program. Because what this program does, it has some very, what I say, unique characteristics to it that empowers the business owner to transition from that place of how do I make it to helping bridge that gap to being able to cross through once this thing is over. So here's how it works. Basically, evaluate your annual payroll. And let's use a quick example. Say your annual payroll is $24,000. Well, with this particular program, you can get 2.5 months of your average payroll. That will establish what your maximum loan will be. So let's use a quick example of 24,000. So at 24,000, the average monthly salary at 24,000 would be $2,000. Well, based on this program, you would be able to get 2.5 times $2, excuse me, $2,000 for a total of $5,000. Now, look at your particular situation to evaluate your payroll situation. So here's what makes the program extremely beneficial to, to small businesses at this time. There's what's called a forgivable component in this. And basically the forgivable component says that after you receive the loan, within eight weeks, if you spend a minimum of 75% of your, your resources on salaries and 25% on what's called general occupancy costs, rent, utilities, and mortgage interest, things like that. Well, what the program is designed to do is to forgive that debt based on your expenditures. So it's a great way for businesses to get that bridge that will allow them to be able to make it through to when we can see better days. Now, a lot of people ask the question, well, how does it become forgivable? Well, there is a process that needs to be done. And that process is, that process is you submit to the lender, the lender reviews your request, and then from there, it makes a determination and you are forgiven of that loan. It's an awesome program. I'm running out of time, but I got two other things I wanna share with you guys. I think every business owner needs to make sure that they talk to their CPA, financial advisor, because there's this economic injury disaster loan program that is absolutely valuable to the small business. Quickly, a couple of components. One, you provided a loan up to $2 million to help bridge during this time. Two, the interest rate is 3.75%. You have up to 30 years for the payback. 12 months of deferred payments. Interest accrues, but deferred payments of 12 months. It is an awesome program. I think people should take advantage of it and, and really look to take advantage of the opportunity. In closing, there's a couple of things that I just want to share. These are real quick. Unfortunately, the enemy took my time, but I'm going to share these really, really, really quick. The things that we wanted to share with you about financial stewardship. One, Habakkuk 2.2, develop the plan. The number one thing that I see with failed businesses is that they do not have a plan. Develop the plan. Two, commit to the plan. Three, take the plan before the throne of God, as Brother Reggie said. Saturate that thing before the king. Allow God to be a part of that. Three, as Pastor Prophet Kendrick Jones always says, look for opportunities for cooperative economics. Basically, cooperative economics is working together with people. <laughs> That's all it is. Look for those opportunities. Four, make kingdom connections. Kingdom connections are this. Connections with 
CPAs, lawyers, financial advisors, creative minded individuals who think, do, and want to be like you. Closing, be consistent, be consistent. The person that ex experiences true financial independence is consistent day one through day 365. Thank you, brother, so much. I had a lot more to share, but hopefully this was been beneficial and I hope it helped out. I thank God for what you guys are doing, empowering people. I love it. God bless. Brother Hamilton, thank you so much. Uh, and we do appreciate that. I used to tell this to Johnny Mac all the time because we have a cooperative thing and when, what, what we do for what he does in his business and with Benny and uh, with us. And I always tell people, you know, you need to defer to the experts in a place where they are anointed at. What Amen. I get from this, Mr. Hamilton, is that uh, I ain't anointed in a whole bunch of places, especially it comes down to the financial side. And as a business person, we're only as strong as our team. As a uh, leader of my family, I'm only as strong as the people that I have around me to support me, like you're saying, from that cooperative space. And this example of this, this thing happening in our country is a prime example of God kind of reminding us. You know, I always say that, you know, God always looks out for babies and fools. And here again, his mercy and grace with the stimulus package, the, the things we have, we've been caught uh, off our post. Real talk, we have been called as men, as the heads of our families, as the leader of our businesses, off yeah. our post. This is a reminder why we need some people like you, Deron. And um, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, moving forward and into that space where we get people gifted in your anointing to help us because God provides us with that. This is just a, a stimulant, uh, this is a, an extension of his kingdom. Amen. You know, so, so where we're financially sound. So men, um, as we get uh, our ships righted, it's just another example. Pull, you, we can't afford not to have people like Mr. Hamilton in our lives. So let's just get it together. So let's go before God in this space. Amen. Heavenly Father, um, we come thanking you for everything, but most importantly, we ask uh, for forgiveness of our financial stewardship. I might be speaking for myself or but a lot of the brothers over here. I won't be presumptuous about you know everybody, Father, but I know that I was caught uh, off my post. And Father, yes. so I repent of that. I ask that you give us mercy and grace like you have as we get this thing right, Father, and so that we can present ourselves decently in order in terms of our finances into the kingdom, because everything depends upon it. So we thank you for opening up our eyes as we be still and know that you are God. Yeah. We love you. We honor you, Father. And now we want to repent and get our thing right. So, Father, any and everything that the universe can open up for these men of God here, Father, that through our finances, we ask that you give it to us, Father. We just um, come before the throne and let you know that we are in need, Father. We don't want to uh, lose what we have, Father. So any and every opportunity that we have, Father, we want to take advantage of it. And we thank you for providing it to us. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Uh, we'll see you back over here on Tuesday of next week, where we have Brother Reggie Wright uh, leading us in these uh, in the conversation. So we look forward to having y'all be a blessed man, and let's stand firm and do what we have to do. Amen. All right. Thank you so much, brother Hamilton. You did a great Enjoyed job. It. Look forward to it. All right. Thank you. Peace, y'all. Thank you. All right. Those high words.